I'm Brian Rich from Money Markets TV. First quarter of 2011 has come to a close. And while it was good for the stock market, it wasn't good for the world. Uh, in fact, it came with an unimaginable number of economic shocks. First, it was flooding in Australia, then an earthquake in New Zealand, uh, social uprisings in the Middle East and North Africa, uh, an intensifying debt crisis in Europe, and finally, uh, a massive earthquake, tsunami, and, and ongoing nuclear fallout in Japan. The economist uh, Nassim Taleb coined the phrase black swan to describe an event that's high impact, hard to predict, uh, and beyond the realm of, of normal expectations based on history. Uh, and this year, we haven't just seen a black swan, we've, we've seen a flock of them. Uh, in financial markets, these considered rare, low probability occurrences are called tail events. And Wall Streeters uh, try to build in allowances for these events when they make their economic and stock market projections uh, or calculate their risks. But as we've seen, these models don't work so well. They don't do well at predicting crises or at measuring the ultimate fallout. Moreover, these rare events tend to show up with greater frequency uh, in crisis environments and they tend to be very destructive. This year's cluster of, of disasters happened in the midst of a feeble recovery, and that's following the worst global economic downturn on record. But the markets have simply shrugged them off. Government officials and policymakers have done the same. They've gone right back to forecasting uh, robust recoveries, telegraphing interest rate hikes, and, and removing fiscal stimulus. But they're forgetting the very recent past. Like today, the punches were, were coming fast and furious in, in 2007 and 2008. And no one had a time for, or a frame of reference for those global uh, shocks either. Yet, just like they're doing now, the markets just shrugged it off. Investors kept building more and more risk. Uh, and public leadership showed the same sense of, of denial and arrogance until the wheels finally came off. Now, much like in 2008, European policymakers are ready to pull the trigger on rate hikes, and the Bank of England might be next. And Federal Reserve officials have been growing more hawkish as well. But the global economy is still extremely fragile, even without taking into account uh, the impact of this year's economic shocks. So a premature tightening from global policymakers could not only solidify another global downturn, it could exacerbate it. Some private sector economists are now starting to see the writing on the wall. Macroeconomic advisors uh, just revised its first quarter GDP estimate for the states from 4% all the way down to 2.3%. And Goldman Sachs has just done the same, uh, revising down its estimate for the first quarter from 3.5% to 2.5%. And they say they're very worried about uh, the second half of the year. Meanwhile, the Fed, the ECB, and the Bank of England are still hanging on to the hope that they were able to bridge the gap between the worst economic crisis uh, since the Great Depression and a robust recovery. Um, but history shows us that's not likely. Instead, historical debt crises suggest that the decade-long buildup in credit that fueled the global economic downturn will take at least that long to unwind. And with that, we're less than halfway through it. I'm Brian Rich from Money Markets TV. Thanks for watching.